Well, hello, welcome to another Guns Contractors video. Uh, today, I'm gonna to take you around the Executive Hire Show. That's uh, up in Coventry. And a bit of continuity editing here. Um, forgot to film an intro on the day. Um, but it was a really interesting show. Plenty to see. Very much a uh, theme of electric vehicles up there. Um, but yeah, still lots to, uh, lots to see. And was even uh, trying to do a few deals for things for my business as well. Um, so a decent day out, not the biggest show in the world, um, but what was there was really quality and had some really good, um, genuine sort of decent conversations with people. Um, lots of sort of reps versus uh, sort of customers ratio, so you could always sort of speak to someone. So that was quite refreshing. Um, if you're genuinely interested in kit and doing some deals, I'd recommend uh, going in the future. Uh, so yep, yeah, here's my take. Here's what I saw that I thought was interesting. Um, there was plenty more, but uh, couldn't um, couldn't film at all. Um, not a huge amount of machines there. Obviously, it's an indoor indoor show, which is uh, pleasant with the weather we've had. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy uh, my walk around a few machines, things I saw, things I thought was interesting, um, and yeah, catch you in a bit. Well, this is the Sunny 26U, which is a two point, nearly 2.8 ton machine. Um, certainly will be once you put a, a set of buckets and a quick hitch on it. And so it's towable. Uh, it comes with the two auxiliary services and your third service for a quick hitch as well. That's all standard. It's quite a good high spec on this machine. Um, and really looking around it, uh, you know, it looks, looks well built. Nice welding, um, it's consistent. There's, you know, not, not a lot to moan about. You've got some pin end greasing going on. Um, that's not on every pin, mind you, but you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't look the worst. You know, there's a little bit where I think, well, you probably want a bit of weld here, maybe. But they are a very, very big manufacturer of machines in China. You got check valves on the machine. There's there is a lot to like. Something I've certainly noticed um, is they're claiming a, a max oil flow here of 72 liters a minute. Now, I don't know if that's to the dipper end because if it is, that would be a market leading uh, oil flow to the end and would certainly run a flail, etc., really well. But I will say that all this pipe work, the auxiliary pipe work is, is a relatively small gauge. And even on the return side, you know, you're running a flail or a hammer, that back pressure is, is key for all of that. And I'm not sure you'd get that out of this size pipe work. Um, cab, I think the door has been closed, which is a bit of a shame, but I've been in the cab. Um, it's quite nice, the track, nice metal track pedals and quite usable as well. Um, they've got a new screen in there, which you can't really see through the, the glare in here. Um, that new screen is quite a nice touch, certainly a bit different from uh, ones I've driven. Nice flat floor. Um, round the back, the door sort of folds in and pretty much stays within the counterweight. It's not absolutely perfect, but um, certainly by far not the worst. Access, I mean this is a zero machine so you are going to be struggling for access to these things. Um, it's tucked right in there. Oh, I wouldn't say this is the best for access. You've got your fuel filters etc. Um, you can get to your oil dipstick down here but you know fan belt I don't even know how you'd get to that. Probably have to go in uh, under the seat etc. Um, but they are always a compromise on these. Uh, as I understand it, uh, the fuel tank's under here, but this is all locked up. I can't, can't get in there, it's a bit of a shame. Um, nice metal bodywork. Track frame looks pretty good. It's got a top roller on there. A little bit flat on the top, so it will build up a bit of muck. Um, but a few features that the rep has told me about. He reckons it'll dig and clean up to the blade, which is a nice touch. Um, you've got a good grouping of some grease points here. Uh, it's not, you, you, you'd struggle to find things to hate it for, to be honest. They've got a new uh, parts depot in Scotland now, um, and that supplies the whole of the country for parts. So you'd like to think that parts backup is getting better. Now, I know somebody um, who has the eight ton machine, and he is unfortunately, in fact, they've got the eight ton machine here, um, he has unfortunately had some issues with it, and I think it definitely is 14 ton machine he had some issues and has now sold it, mainly due to uh, parts supply issues. But it does sound like Sunny are uh, trying to sort of get on top of that. Um, back of the eight ton machine. I mean, they're a nice basic 
straightforward machine. Uh, there's not, as I say, there's not a huge amount to hate. They run uh, typically Yanmar engines. This one has the same as that uh, 26U, both Yanmar engines. Obviously this one's bigger. Um, access in here is actually really good for your oil and get to your fan belt, um, fuel filters, etc. That's not bad at all. And there's plenty of further room in here um, if you wanted to. Don't know what it's like around the side. Again, good, nice metal bodywork. Um, don't know how you'd get to your radiators. There must be a way to get into here. Um, and I dare say the rest of it, yeah, is locked up there, which is a bit of a shame, but so can't see it all. Uh, but nice, strong metal work. Blade's got a nice rounded edge to it. Cab looks really, really spacious. I mean, they're not the most um, of luxury cabs. There's a lot of blank plastic in there, etc. Um, again, it's all locked up, so you can't get into these things. How do you expect to sell it, Sani, if I can't get in it? Um, but it's got a good high back seat in there. Uh, it's very difficult to see with all the glare. Uh, but not, again, you'd struggle to find things to hate it for. Um, welding quality, I'd say overall is very, very good. So, certainly um, machines to watch, I think, Sani. They're making large moves in the UK. They're bringing out telehandlers, they're bringing out rollers, they're bringing out a loading shovel later on this year. Um, you know, it's got the stage five emissions. Uh, they are certainly one to watch um, because competitively priced, um, and if they're decent enough machines to drive, there won't be a lot of arguments um, not to buy one, really. If, of course, you can prove the backup, which is the big thing for us owner operators, isn't it? So this is the new electric Sani 19E, which has got a couple of quite nice little features on it that I don't think we've seen yet from some of the other manufacturers of the sort of 1.9 tonne battery excavator. Fully battery. Um, they, they say that the battery type in this is a, uh, got it written here, the lithium iron phosphate battery, which is cobalt free, and apparently that gives it a significant uh, sort of longer life. Um, they're saying kind of up to 3,000 or so charges. So, uh, you know, th that's sort of one feature. But what I really like about it is the ability, you can plug it in through a three pin plug socket, of course, but also um, a type two car charger, which is where I see them going. Because if you're a landscaper and you're in, someone's garden um, and you're working you know maybe they've got an electric car and you can plug this thing into the car charger and i think that's that, that's almost essential really for this this kind of gear um i you know i'd like to see some of the other manufacturers follow suit as well on that that's uh, that's a really good thing um they're not giving official run times yet i know everyone will be asking that personally i as long as it'll do over six hours ish of digging you know average digging that to me is is really going to be good enough um, details otherwise are very, very similar to their, their standard machine. Again, it's the same as the 26 and the 8 tonner. There's nothing here that you think is particularly horrible. Um, I mean, it's got a nice start stop button. You get all your charge information on the screen, um, fast charge, etc. Um, they reckon on a fast charge, a little charge in something like one and a half hours, which is, well, very impressive. Now, what that depends on the power put into it, and there's a lot behind all of these stated figures, isn't there? Um, but it'll take eight, eight to nine hours to charge via a three pin plug otherwise. Um, good high back seat, um, nice, again, metal full pedals that are actually quite usable on this. Uh, there's not, again, there's not a lot to really hate on it. It's very, very difficult to find things where you think, well, I'll be critical of that. Um, I think there's a lot more to come from these electric machines. I certainly don't think we're there yet, uh, but this machine, it may well be, from the specs, um, certainly one to challenge the JCB and the Bobcat electric E19, of course, that they recently released. So we're in the new JCB towable telehandler, the 51440. Now, I nearly bought one of these, so I'm quite, versed in the specs etc um, the cabs in these for a start are hugely bigger than any of the competitors the Wiedemann 
um, slash Wackanoosen, um, and even that uh, Manitou that I saw the other week at Lama. And it, really, it's, it's like a mini loader. Um, this replaces, uh, I think, the slightly bigger, is it the 516? I can't remember the exact name, but um, this is their new kind of mini telehandler. Full hydrostatic, um, you've got front and rear work lights, all your switches and things down here. Um, sort of rabbit mode, you've got the basic dash, which looks like it came out of my old 801 actually, but gives you the fuel level, your hours, etc. And any warning signs down there. Um, proper heaters, actually vents that point at the windscreen. There's two down here, one in the corner, um, even one at the back here. So that's also a nice little feature. Otherwise, this lever is very, very similar to the Wackanoosen. You've got forward and back uh, on your lever here. Um, auxiliary controls, boom in and boom out. Interesting, they've gone with a the two stick design rather than the buttons that you so often get on the back. There are buttons on the back of this joystick, but I dare say um, maybe maybe it, it works for both. I'll, I'll have to ask the, uh, the salesman, but anyway, nice, um, nice little machine. As I say, decent access. Uh, top of the door folds back quite nicely and you can have that open slightly as well for ventilation, which is a nice touch. Decent door, gas strut even, very, very posh. And it, the key with this machine really is, and, and where it's, it's kind of got the edge over its competitors, is its ability to lift uh, 1.4 tonnes. So your Wackanoosen will only do 1.2. Um, some of the Manitou machines will do 1.4 as well. I don't think they go to the full lift height, which this will do. Um, around the back here, you've got your fuel tank under here. I can't work out how to get this panel open, but pretty sure your fuel tank is under here in your battery. Um, around the side here, you've got, it is plastic bodywork, but I guess they've had to, you know, save some weight somewhere. Uh, you've got a little Perkins three cylinder engine, uh, no DPF, uh, no AdBlue obviously on these sort of things. Access, I mean, access is tight, but you can get to all the bits, oil dipstick, etc. Uh, you've got fuel filters, Oil filter would be tricky to get to down here and you may well have to take off this uh, side skirt, but it looks like they've got some external bolts to do that if needed. Having said that, they are the famous uh, Allen key ones that do like to round off and rust up, but that aside, um, it shouldn't be too horrendous for access once you drill them out, replace them with something half decent. Um, boom, etc. Very, very loadal. It's got a new type of headstock. Um, this one's obviously running the bucket. Oh, they've opened the back up. That's handy. Um, so you've got your battery here, uh, as I say, hydraulic tank, fuel, etc. which nicely you can get a jerry can to. Um, you know, you'd actually be able to fill that up, which is, uh, which is a nice little, nice little feature. Overall, it's just towable. And I mean just towable. Um, they say it's 2.7 tonne, but let's face it, by the time you've got either a bucket with you, you've got forks, etc., um, you are going to be right on the limit of that. Um, but a proven uh, set of axles, etc., nice little design. I think this will sell really, really well. Um, and yeah, I'd like, uh, like to try it out sometime. As I say, I did nearly buy one. The money was, the money was expensive. It was high 40s and um, I just couldn't justify it for my little business. Um, and that's why I ended up going with the backhoe, as you know. But nice little machine. Uh, let's say, we'll, we'll, time will tell. Um, but I think it'll, it'll run rings around that, uh, that little Wackamoosen Wiedemann uh, that we use. And 1.4 is the key number because that's what most pallets are. And 1.2 that those others will lift, just, it's just not quite enough. So. Nice new product from, from JCB here. Um, yeah, good to see it finally in the metal. As uh, I've known about this machine for a few months now. It's nice to finally see it. I think they've done a good job on most of the details you can see here. Well, sticking on a theme here of electric, there seems to be a lot of that going on at this show. Um, new electric bell mixer. I mean, it's in every way the bell mixer that you all know and love. Um, but powered by a lithium electric motor. Now, this one is a prototype, so information is low on the ground, um, but I like the idea, and it, the petrol engine ones have always been troublesome for me, difficult to refuel, the oil um, uh, like cut out in them if you have them 
set either one way or the other you can sometimes end up with the oil it thinks it's got low oil in it because of the angle it's working and it cuts out um, they fall over because they're so heavily weighted backwards so I, I think a lot of um, a lot of promise for this machine and I'm sure I've seen somewhere um, that they were saying that they reckon you could get 20 or more mixes out of it uh, in a sort of standard working shift so it'll be nice and quiet um, it says it weighs 60 kilos again I'm not sure if that's actually accurate or um, whether that's just a kind of guess for this prototype but I like it I like the idea I think small machines like this um, you know products like the Wacker plate I mean I had one of these the petrol engine version of this um, they're really good uses for uh, battery technology lithium technology only thing I'd say with a lot of these you know they've got it's, it's a bit sort of bulkier on the top as such and you have potential damage you know anything above this this chassis here this frame is potentially damageable um, which is a, a bit of a shame sort of trying to shoehorn that electric motor and battery in there um, but of course you've got to be able to get your battery out and charge it etc so it's always a compromise with these things isn't it but um, yeah nice to see some of these smaller machines I mean here's a here's a petrol one that I used to own um, you can see it's a lot more compact than the than its battery equivalent but good to see some of these battery machines here I think it's a great use for battery same with their small wacker plate and uh, a decent stand from Bell I mean how many how many mixes do we want to look at because there's plenty of them um, but they make a yeah they make a good product especially these small tools nice stand Well, more electric kit in this Merlot 25.5-9 and they open the engine bay electricery that's quite a nice tidy little machine two and a half ton maximum lift up to 4.8 meters height the uh, cab is quite a tidy looking thing plastic seats I never understand why you go for a plastic seat with a cab you're just very sweaty but um, it, typically Merlot it, it quite a um, a kind of modern design nice sleek cab pillars visibility not great for a small machine like this I know the boom is up but you know there's not amazing visibility behind there's quite a big area here of, um, of bodywork etc a nice wide door um, just glass on the top so I'm gonna be careful of damaging that but a nice um, nice enough machine fully electric four-wheel drive but too heavy to tow um, of course it weighs nearly five ton unladen but then that does give it the two and a half ton lift this would be the equivalent of the um, JCB was it the 525-60 a lot of electric kit here this year um, got the Singo track barrow again this time with its uh, its actual track barrow frame on uh, it's a bit of a complicated design the way it scissors up and uh, I, I don't know I see a lot of muck being able to get in these rails as, as this slides etc but you do get a good tipping height that way but of course you can't go very far forward into your skip from where you can get your machine to uh, 500 kilo track barrow they say I quite like the idea of these around the back just to stop gear falling back um, especially onto these exposed hydraulic hoses here but of course that's how you change your attachments uh, this one's driven by the Honda petrol engine um, but of course you can swap that out for different attachments which is where this Singo kind of carrier um, adds to its versatility um, doesn't say how wide it is of course to me mm, looks maybe maybe wider than where the gateway would be um, and this is the uh, probably the same one I think we had at uh, Lama the other week now I still haven't cleared up um, its actual capacity of course it's got a machine capacity it says of 1200 and a maximum capacity of 400 so um, a bit tricky to work out but uh, essentially what it can take on here is 1200 kilos and what you can lift really is 400 kilos 
up to uh, up to a lift as you can see on the lift chart at the back here um, of course all this does come off as i said so you've got quite a versatile bit of kit i mean there are a lot of money there are a lot of money but quite a cute machine no doubt and this is their um, standard little little track barrow uh, i don't really know what's going on with this enclosed skip here with pins to remove it that looks really fiddly to me i know you could take it off but then muck's going to get caught up on this and uh, i don't know uh, i think merlot are trying they're trying with this these sort of small machines you know they've all got auxiliary hydraulic ports it's interesting uh, as a concept but i just can't see some of the designs just need a little bit of tweaking for me um, to catch up with where uh, some of these other manufacturers are i think these little track barrows um, again this one's petrol i dare say it'll come in a diesel no doubt um, handbrake controls i mean you know it's all there and feels okay but i've just i think we've seen we've seen better track barrows about at this show to be honest plenty of electric kit around and husqvarna are no exception with their new disc cutters range and you've got the batteries chargers you can use it for diamond drillers you've also got um, your power screeds there's even a, a nifty little work light idea here I mean, it's, it's a good idea. I think battery could work in some circumstances for these small tools. This is obviously a different size battery um, for your smaller drills, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, it, it's, got, it's got a lot of potential. Um, uh, you know, fumes of these things aren't good. Two-stroke engines aren't great for the environment. But that aside, um, just overall noise. I mean, a lot of the noise you generate with a cutter, yes, you get cutting noise, but you've also got an awful lot of engine noise and you're often working in interior spaces etc i think they have a lot of potential these machines uh, this saw here has a 350 mil blade on it so it should cut through a standard four inch wall quite nicely looks a well made well balanced machine as you'd expect from husqvarna um, so yeah i'm keen to see more of these about and i'd love to love to try one one day so this is the Sunward SWE-08B and uh, it actually is, the 08 bit is a bit misleading really because it actually weighs a ton. So it's uh, more of a competitor to um, the U10 Kubota or, or those slightly bigger, um, bigger and heavier machines. Now there's quite a lot to like about these Sunwards. The price uh, just been quoted at 14,000 for this with um, you know, four buckets, etc., and a hitch. Uh, that seems tempting. Um, you've got a Yanmar engine, which I can get up. It actually tilts forward. I mean, that's that's quite a nice design. Um, a lot of them, the they actually go the other way, and it makes it awkward. You've got to get in down there and get to stuff. This is a really nice idea. Um, so Yanmar engine in there hydraulic tank I mean it's tight don't get me wrong and it always will be in one of these little um, micros it's not zero swing but it doesn't have the biggest back end on it um, let's see if I can close it again metal bodywork you know it sits all right counterweight sits down here again metal panels on the side so you've got half a chance of uh, bending them you can straighten them again it's nice and simple um, you've got pods now this here is fixed in fact they're both fixed either side which is a bit strange and there's no adjustment on these at all but they are all part of the um, of the thing here getting on and off isn't too bad you have got to get yourself between the roll bar and the lever um, joysticks are fairly familiar nothing really to talk about here I do quite like the, the sort of proper tracking levers I think they're quite nice um, you've got a big fuel gauge here a um, couple of your switches quick track etc down there even as a lifting mode although I don't know what you'd lift maybe your lunch with a little micro digger but um, essentially this machine goes down to 950 I'm told which would get it through a lot of gateways not everyone um, but for a one ton machine again comparable to your U10s your Takuchi 210s etc um, is actually fairly competitive i just uh, i mean they tell me it comes with the warranty 
um, you can get you get a three-year warranty but it's not quite as straightforward as that you get a three-year warranty the first year is parts and labor on the whole thing the second year is only on and the third year are only on the drivetrain um, engine well, it must be engine and drivetrain but uh, it's not on the whole machine so you think you're getting a three-year warranty it's not quite that straightforward and parts are in Belgium they have apparently got a huge warehouse even with spare cabs and all sorts of stuff in Belgium but it's in Belgium and you know the salesman there was quoting two days of lead time well by the time you've got a fitter out to look at your problem you've then got two days to wait for your parts and then the fitter's got to come out a third time or second time rather to fit those you are probably three to four days into a breakdown which uh, it's just it's just not quite there for me yet and you know you compare them to Sani who are next door now with that Scottish warehouse they're going to run run rings around that sort of lead time if you're in the uh, market for a Chinese excavator the other thing is just quality issues small things I mean yeah you know a bit of silver dash here I think somebody went to max power in 2001 and thought that that would look like a good idea but but I'd say worse is weld quality you look at these these little details around here I mean what has gone on here it's just not quite there for me there's some nice welding on it uh, but overall I'm not sure I'm not sure at 14,000 that that's enough for me to take a punt at this stage uh, I mean, it's a couple of grand cheaper than its comparative machines but I'm just not quite there yet um, for the Sun Wards but they do have a 2.7 ton machine down the way so this is their six tonner which I haven't really got many comments on to be honest um, this is the uh, this is the machine in my kind of uh, class this is the 25 so this is the two and a half ton um, SWE 25 UF and so it comes in at 2.5 ton um, depending on configuration that will fit nicely on a trailer uh, decent length arm on it you know with all your buckets and everything um, on the face of it uh, quite a competitive uh, machine here now it runs a Yanmar engine again um, Japanese hydraulics they say uh, track frame looks nice and airy it's actually got an X frame design similar to some other manufacturers as we know um, it looks okay again maybe a bit flat on on here but it's a bit of mud would sit there but certainly easy enough to clean in fact there aren't any annoying bolts or anything so you could just get a shovel in there and clean that out quite nicely a um, bit of a toolbox access panel here um, and, and inside fairly usable track pedals and we'll climb in and uh, and have a go in a second access is okay this is a zero machine of course and visibility is good controls feel pretty to hand dozer lever is nice you've got your fuel and uh, engine temperature etc down here that all feels pretty good relatively cheap plastics but I mean I've had worse certainly in machines and you know nice open in fact you've got glass above here which is nice to see so many fit um, fit something worse don't they the old perspex and you can't see decent opening side windows both ways here you can open that this way you can bring this one wiper is fairly out of the way there I'd say it's not so bad uh, yeah I mean it's it's basic we'll try the old foot pedals see if we can't uh, I mean it's usable it's usable uh, you, you, in fact it's worse pushing forward really because your toe has stabs the windscreen so but you know the, the levers themselves feel feel nice to hand they're okay um, not the worst machine really for visibility I'd say this is more like their modern more modern design um, you've got your radio back up here that's all right hey cup holder look at that how the other Chinese can get it right so <laughs> It hasn't got a flat floor it's still got um, your auxiliary uh, I'd imagine that would be slew probably on the pedal down here um, this one is a blank which actually gives you a nice anchored position to sit in the seat with um, you've got your roller 
um, on the joystick, which would be great for a grab. Um, the left hand so roll the left hand joystick doesn't have that so if you were running uh, a grab you'd probably have your grab on here and maybe you'll rotate down here on the pedal and there must be a changeover switch for that um, switches are actually very similar to the wacker Newson. um you know half decent quality all out of that i mean it has adjustable wrist rests it's not horrendous really there's even the ability to move this um forward and back which is quite a nice little touch in fact i'd like to see some of our mainstream manufacturers give me that much adjustableness in a wrist rest to be honest um legroom okay you know it's not horrendous in here really it feels a bit cheap but it's, it is a digger you know really at the end of the day um not uh, certainly not the worst cab I've I've been in. Stepping out round the back, your engine, as I say, is the Yanmar um, oil filter, oil access. Can you get to the fan belt? Not really. It's tight in there, but you are always going to have that problem with these zero tail machines. But otherwise, everything you'd need filter-wise, air filters, nicely easy. It's all to hand and metal panels, it's all, it's all well enough made. They're pretty comparatively priced these, I haven't got a price on this one, um, but I also can't find any bad welding on it, like I could on the other machine. That's not to say there isn't any, because obviously I haven't studied it in huge detail, but they, if they nail the parts back up, um, you are going to see some of these on sites for sure. Um, high spec as they are, um, they are going to be a tempting proposition, proposition for many. And you can't blame them because, you know, hydraulic quick hitches, etc. Uh, you'd, you'd be paying a lot of money for a, um, one of the other mainstream Japanese manufacturers or um, even the, you know, JCBs, etc. for this kind of spec. So, um, yeah, nice to see one in the flesh. Haven't seen one, or in the metal rather. And uh, yeah, it's, they look okay. Questions on, on the warranty, questions on parts back up, but certainly uh, a brand to watch out for. We're continuing the electric theme, we've got the Thwaites 3 ton electric. Now this machine looks very, very familiar to you. It's exactly virtually the same as the standard three ton swivel dumper, but of course, powered by electricity. Um, and what they've done here is quite clever because you open the, uh, you open the, where you would think the engine would be and it's just a hollow. There's nothing really here. There's a control box, etc. there, but essentially your 12 volt system, which of course means that all your weight now is much, much lower, which is going to increase stability. And as we know on these dumpers, that's a huge deal um, for these machines. Stability, people roll them over all the time. Otherwise, a very, very familiar um, control system to your standard dumper. Now, they say that battery life will last an eight hour shift. And what it does is quite clever, really. You think about how a dumper is used. Um, of course, it turns, you know, you, you, you turn up to the digger, don't you? You have to get off the machine. Well, it probably sits there idling for I don't know, 50% of the time, maybe more as a dumper. I'd say they probably do a lot of idle time, these machines. And as a result, um, this machine, being electric, will sort of go into like a semi-shutdown mode where it's using a lot, lot less power than it would when it's driving. Um, however, it still allows you to use the skip and it actually has a joystick um, to allow you to still swivel the skip as required. So quite a clever bit of thinking here from Thwaites, kind of like a power saving mode, but you can also boost the skip tip. So, you know, you want to get the muck out the skip instead of traditionally you'd press the throttle. Well, of course you can't do that with an electric machine because it doesn't rev, does it? So they actually have a boost button on uh, for the skip to increase the tipping speed and help it get the muck out. So a really interesting idea. It's twice as expensive as a standard three ton dumper. And let's face it, three-ton dumpers, or all dumpers, are getting expensive enough as they were. However, um, I like the concept, I like the idea, and I think 
of all the machines that you know go electric, um, this this could be one that works because they spend a lot of time idling. You're not only reducing emissions and all of that sort of stuff, but just noise. You know that thing sat there ticking over. We've all been there. Um, I, I just like the I like the idea of it. Uh, charging options. Uh, currently, you can plug it in uh, with a plug, standard three-pin plug. It takes eight hours, eight nine hours to charge your batteries. Um, it says here about 100% battery recharge. Now something I've learned today is that you don't ever drain a battery 100%. So most of these things go into like a form of limp mode uh, when they get down to anything from 18 to 10%. Um, and essentially what happens is the machine goes into like a, a low power mode, which purely is just to get you back to a charge point. So that means you don't actually have 100% battery. You've got, let's say 90% battery in this case with this machine. Um, so they're saying from 100%, but that's 100% of 90% of the available power, if you see what I mean. And from as little as two hours, well, that's if you're on a fast charger, um, which of course there's multiple ways of, of charging these things. Um, they will do plugs for car chargers when they release this. This is currently still a prototype, but it will be able to plug into um, standard car charger, the old type two uh, plugs, etc. cetera. Um, so, a lot of, I see a lot of options with these, and I like the idea. Um, be interesting, interesting to see when they release it, um, and maybe maybe have a play. Because as I say, idling is just just annoying. It's wasting diesel, and it's it's horrendous. Um, be good to see how much power she's got. Of course, with electric motors, a lot more torque. Um, should have a good amount of power. Um, maybe even more, dare I say, than the standard uh, power shuttle they, they put in them currently in these three tonners. Um, so yeah, that's the electric three ton dumper. So that was the executive hire show. Uh, as I said, definitely a theme of electric there and pretty much every machine uh, was electric, uh, really. A couple of diesel ones, uh, as I said, but mostly electric machinery. Uh, it has a, it has a, a very niche market really at the moment. I think the battery technology just isn't there to make them um, feasible for sort of everyday use for a lot of us. Uh, there'd be a lot of battery anxiety going on, etc. A machine I would love to try out though. I think it would make a, a really good video and you know, let's see, see what they are really like because of course the manufacturers would tell us they've got lots of data and telematics on the fact that we don't actually use the machines as much as we think we do. Um, and I, I believe them, you know, I, um, I see that data from uh, my own uh, telematics, etc. that I have on my machine. So it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, give it a go. Have to be the right environment, I think, and in, a, in an area that's very quiet, uh, or you need to be quiet, noise restrictions, or potentially you're working indoors, you know, and you, don't, you can't create any emissions there, etc. Um, you know, those electric machines will have a significant uh, benefit to you. Um, but yeah, until I can get my hands on one, um, we have to take their, their word for how long they last and, and, and what you can do, etc. That Thwaites dumper, though, was interesting. Uh, the fact that it sort of turns itself off in a way or goes down to a reduced power mode um, when it's otherwise idling as it would be, I guess, otherwise, uh, I think that's that's quite clever. And that's a machine that maybe suits the electric, you know, a bit more than maybe some of the diggers um, do. So, yeah, uh, whacker plates, etc. Uh, you know, again, they don't run all day, do they? I think there's a there's a, a genuine sort of benefit potentially in, in running... Um, uh, a battery operated one. Just want to see a little bit better design really, uh, especially from Bell. I like their products, um, nicely made up in Derbyshire, but they haven't integrated the electric that well, I don't think, into the design of their sort of standard plates. I'd rather see them redesign the Wacker plate maybe to be electric, you know, rather than kind of shoehorning it into the old design. Um, that's sort of how I felt it was, you know, you've got a lot, a lot of different things with electric. Um, you've got to think about how you get the battery out, charging, etc. and yeah, I just felt it was a bit of a bit of a shoehorn design there from from them. But uh, yeah, that electric mixer, that's um, that's pretty cool. Uh, it seems really obvious, doesn't it? But certainly, uh, potentially, a lot a lot more um, user friendly than the petrol version. So that was my feeling on the uh, on the show anyway. Um, I had a really good chat, fuel proof as well, about some stuff for me, a new tank possibly. Uh, great chat with uh, Caesar Data Tag as well. 
and yeah I hope to maybe do some more stuff um, showcasing their stuff shortly because they've got a couple of new products out um, that are really quite interesting actually and whilst I'm a small user of plant I don't have a huge amount of it uh, obviously you know this is more going to more suit bigger fleets etc the principle is that uh, yeah the, you know the, the basis behind the technology uh, could be advantageous um, even to a small person like myself so um, yeah have to see what the future holds with that uh, made a lot of uh, a lot of contacts and hopefully um, we'll yeah bring some new content to the channel uh, based on that but time will tell uh, anyway good to uh, good to walk around with a press pass uh, that was pretty cool and um, you know meet the other the other guys up there who've been doing this a lot longer than I have uh, and do it what I call professionally whereas I'm just a guy who's pretty um, pretty passionate about his machines and, and, and the business uh, of small contracting work. So I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed my video. Uh, tried to just give you a flavour of what was there and the kind of technology that's uh, that's about. And uh, yeah, more more will be coming soon. Got a few things uh, to review for my channel. Uh, got a, the new Kubota U10 um, Dash 5 as well. That I'll be using next week. Uh, that'll uh, that'll make a decent review as well. So. Um, plenty coming. I'm doing my best to really push this year and, and get some behind the wheel, behind the, the sticks, the levers, I guess, of some new machinery uh, to um, yeah show what I can uh, what I can and review as much plants as I can for uh, for you guys. Cause you seem to enjoy that, which is great. Uh, so anyway, my name's Ollie Guns. You can find me on uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Guns Contractors, uh, all of the usual things, and uh, hopefully uh, catch you soon. Thanks, guys.